Modern warships are much more than just a ship and some guns. With how much Star Citizen is striving to be an immersive experience, there is a lot that can carry over to make its naval vessels something really special. So if you're interested in what makes up a warship and how that might influence the game, all from a 12-year Navy veteran, this one's for you. First off, there are all sorts of words and phrases that are used on ships that you might not be familiar with. I've added a whole bunch of them at the end of the video in the chapter called Nautical Terms, so if by mistake I slip into any of them without meaning to, you can quickly skip to there to see what the hell I'm on about. Even areas that are common to every ship operate slightly different in ships of war. Every bridge will have an officer on duty 24-7, the officer of the watch, but warships will have additional personnel to perform other tasks, like acting as a lookout and sending and receiving tactical communications. This is how ships that are operating together communicate formations and changes of course and speed, all received on the bridge and all passed directly to the officer of the watch. The ship's control centre, or machinery control room, is the engineering heart of the ship. All of the monitoring equipment for the masses of systems will be here, displaying everything from power generation, fuel, engines, ventilation, fresh water and cooling and so on. It's also the ship's damage control hub, where water and smoke sensors are monitored and where repair efforts are coordinated. We can already see this idea being implemented with some of the ships in Star Citizen, like the Hammerhead or the 890 Jump and their engineering base. These spaces will have an engineer in charge, an engineering officer the watch, and a watch of engineers who are performing maintenance and rounds. This is a neat idea if you apply it to Star Citizen, maybe one of the first indications we could get that equipment is malfunctioning and in need of repair or replacement is something visual like sparks or a different colour to what's normally seen, or even a sound effect cue. Before I cover one of the most important spaces to a warship that we have yet to see in Star Citizen, let's just be clear on what we're talking about. That's the game's larger multi-crew ships like the Hammerhead, Idris and Polaris. There's not much carryover to fighters or dropships for example. Also, bear in mind that military vessels with a purpose that isn't combat, like the Carrick and its focus on exploration, won't necessarily be able to apply all of what we're talking about. The core of a warship's ability to fight is the operations room, or ops room for short. I believe my American brothers call it the CIC. Long gone are the days where you'll have seen in films like Greyhound where Tom Hanks as the captain basically lives on the bridge during combat. Now, the CO will be in the ops room, with his principal warfare officer and a whole host of other ranks and rates manning radars, sonars, weapon systems, passive systems, and other stuff that isn't really fit for general consumption. The ops room is the ship's brain, drawing together the information from its sensors, formulating a solution, and then putting it into action through its weapon systems and directing the officer of the watch on the bridge. In the real world, these are situated deep in the bowels of the ship, where it's shielded by other compartments with a bunch of dim lighting so radar screens can be better monitored. Think man cave, but instead of gaming, it's all about warfare. In Star Citizen, this wouldn't necessarily be the best option to implement them in the game. It'd be hard for players to maintain a sense of place and scale if you had spent the entire time somewhere with no windows on your ship or way to view the outside universe. This seems to be why the Idris has this space that was shown off in Squadron 42's vertical slice a few years back. There are a lot of stations here for this area to just perform the bridge function. This is also true of the very first trailer for Star Citizen where we see uh, what can only be described as a really early idea of what the Bengals bridge may look like. That holographic display right there screams ops room to me. Something I've mentioned in a previous video is the idea of magazines. On warships, a magazine is a secure compartment used for the storage of weapons and ammunition. In the Royal Navy, it's the ship born equivalent of an armoury. They're almost devoid of any flammable materials and have fixed firefighting systems like sprinklers to reduce the fire risk. There will be multiple magazines on board, 
each concerned with storing a different type of ammunition. If you think getting one to explode is bad, you want to try it when there are whole different types of ammunition that can react with each other to do even worse things than just go boom. We already know that in Star Citizen, rounds for ballistic weapons will need to be stored somewhere. Consider then that fires started in game will actually spread quicker if there's flammable material nearby. So keeping this stuff or spare torpedoes or missiles for the embedded fighter you have with the rest of your cargo may not be such a great idea. And in keeping the idea of fires and damage just for the moment, Royal Navy warships have multiple FRPPs, that's Fire and Repair Party Posts, that stock firefighting equipment and clothing, a damaged state board that's used to record incidents, communications to talk to other FRPPs and the ship's control centre so that the entire ship has a picture of what damage has been inflicted, as well as pumps and leak stopping kit for dealing with floods. I'm not quite sure what these are called in other navies, so let me know in the comments if you know yourself. As damage modelling in the game becomes more complex and they bring fires online, hopefully at the end of the year actually, this stuff will be really important. So I'm sure we'll see some sort of implementation in game, whether that's just fire extinguishers dotted around or a dedicated space to help with this stuff. I plan to cover damage control in much greater depth in a future video because there are things here that even if they just do a very basic implementation, will be useful to you guys on multi-crew ships, so be sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss it. You'll notice that I've not mentioned medical facilities at all, and that's because I covered that in a previous video I did talking about the Perseus. Link's in the description, and it should be appearing on your screen if you're interested in that one. CIG have already talked about having separate military and civilian components, and I'm sure that's going to have something to do with quality. That's a standout difference between real world warships and pretty much everything else at sea. The kit, like communications kit, it's longer range, there's more of it, and it can often be encrypted. Radars and other sensors are higher definition and able to deal with much faster moving targets and determine the height of aircraft, for example. The point is it's not just quality of components that make something military it's having redundancies it's being able to fall back it's for us to be able to run them to destruction now crg have their plans to make these components different in some way i guess we'll just have to wait and see what they do with it all before we look at how all of this fits together i have a question for you which bits here do you think would fit really well in star citizen Maybe it's something you'd like to see from warships that I haven't mentioned. Whatever it is, let me know down in the comments. So, how does all this make a warship? Here goes. Our ship is part of a fleet in its assigned position in the formation that's just been passed over tactical. In the ops room, the long-range anti-air radar detects fast-moving inbound contacts. They are tracked, analysed and then pushed out to the rest of the fleet in real time, appearing in every ops room at just the push of a button. The aircraft are coming in very low, likely carrying bombs and rockets given their range and speed. The bridge contacts the engineering officer of the watch, ordering all available engines to be brought online immediately. The ops room passes the data to its weapon systems so that it can be used at a moment's notice and ordering the bridge to bring the ship to a new course to best deal with the threat. One of the bridge lookouts spots the aircraft and makes a visual identification which the officer of the watch passes to the ops room before taking manoeuvring in order to maintain weapon arcs on that threat. Then there's a flash. A missile from the fleet's air defence destroyer has splashed one of the incoming aircraft, the other has turned towards our ship. Our ship turns to make itself a harder target but the aircraft lands a rocket before our close-in weapon system splashes it. The closest at fire and repair party post on board to the damage heads to fight the fire that the rocket has started and search for casualties, whilst the engineers attempt to restore lighting to that part of the ship and repair a damaged engine. The OS the watch passes manoeuvring back to the ops room and the ship resumes its station within the fleet. Once it's clear there's no further immediate threat, Fresh munitions will be ordered up from the magazines to replace what has been expended. 
I know I used a few terms in there that not everyone will be familiar with, so I'm going to put a bunch up on the screen from now, uh, along with a whole bunch of standard nautical terms like port and starboard and so on, so you won't sound so much like a landlubber talking about ships. You've been watching Drinkers with Gaming Problems. Thank you very much for stopping by. I'll see you soon.